Fantastic, you're listening! <laughs> what the reframing? Yeah. <laughs> and I say leaders to you, because here we are, seven months into your term, and have you actually realized that you are a leader? Has it sunk in? That's great. So, I'd like you to do a quick reflection internally. In these past seven months, what have you learned about yourself and what have you learned about leadership? So just zip it and think for a second. For some of us, it may take a little bit longer to get into that reflective mode of what it means to, to think about, to reflect upon what we've learned as being a leader. I've noticed a lot of brains still in high speed from the fun that's been happening ahead. But as a great leader, <coughs> you need to take that time to reflect where you are. All right, so first thing in the morning, it might be hard to get to reflective mode, but that's what I'm gonna ask you to do as we go through at this presentation, is get into reflective mode for a minute. So, those of you who are able to get there, could I have a couple of comments about what you've learned so far in your leadership term? You have to commit with your whole heart. Fantastic. Could you hear that? Commit with your whole heart. Uh, Any time you should be an example for others. Being an example for others. Connecting helps. Doing small talks and uh, helps getting things done. Connecting helps. Small mm -hmm. talks with people get things done. Knowing what you want and being able to communicate that to others in your team. Oh, knowing what you want and being able to communicate. You don't, you're not a leader if you don't have followers. Ah, you're not a leader if you don't have followers. And one more. Empowering your team to make decisions and reach your goals. Empower the team to make decisions and reach goals. Fantastic. You've had some great reflections for this time that you've come into it. <coughs> but what does leadership really mean? And why have you chosen to be a leader? All these questions are quite closely related to motivation. And there's many studies that have been done about what, what motivates people. And you'll have every sort of answer on the whole scale of what motivates people. The triggers that motivate people are actually unique. So what motivates you is different than what motivates him. In the motivation studies that are done at work, you'll hear some people like Myers-Briggs or um, the DISC assessment perhaps, some of you have looked at those. They're telling you a general picture of motivation. And then you have to reflect and take it within you to see what motivates you. So by the way, does anybody know which module of the Toastmasters educational program includes a short DISC analysis? So this is a really good one, and we actually had it at our latest club officer training. Does somebody know? The Leadership Excellence Series, part one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> developing your leadership skills, I don't, it's the, 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 the developing your leadership style. Can be in that one. Uh, one of the ones that was done at our latest officer training was the series Building a Healthy Team. Yeah. So when we did that in our leadership training, it included uh, a self-assessment where you decided where you were on the scale. And it's just one of the ways to find out where you are as a leader. So I recommend that one to do yourself or to do with the teams that you have. At some point in time, you decided to be a Toastmaster. So I'd like to turn it to a reflection about Toastmasters here to say, what was it that actually attracted you to Toastmasters? Why did you decide to join? So I'm gonna give you two questions again here now. Again, for a couple minutes of internal reflection and then we're gonna <coughs> switch to a group here as well. So internal reflection, what why did you decide to become a Toastmaster? And why did you decide to stay? So, now I think you've had a time to reflect a little bit. Turn to somebody beside you, nearby you, and tell them your why, and ask them theirs. One, a couple of people sharing. <laughs> I have a couple of shares. Why did you join? 
and why are you staying? I joined to be more comfortable on stage. I stayed because of the community of all the wonderful people I met. Fantastic. I joined because uh, I got an invitation and I was thinking that it's an opportunity that I should try. I didn't know anything about it. And I stayed because uh, I met really inspiring people. Fantastic. Uh, Bertram joined to speak. I joined to listen, and we both stay because of the people that we've met. <laughs> I'll take one more. You. Me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't see very well. I wasn't just sure. Okay. Uh, I, I guess I joined because I wanted to learn how to communicate more and better with people so they actually want to listen. And I stayed because it was working quite well. Because it was? Working quite well. Oh, oh fantastic. So we've, we've all got our different whys. But if I had an hour's presentation, then I would take this and find the common points. But this is certainly an exercise that you can take back to your clubs and try it. <coughs> because finding the why is the important part. Have all of you, maybe at one point in time, seen the golden circle? Simon Sinek. <laughs> Simon Sinek talks about the golden circle. So what we've done just now is zoom in on the why. And why is that important? What does it have to do with us in Toastmasters? If we can find the why of why our members join, and the why that they stay, this is the key to keeping our clubs. It's when we start to lose the why, the club members drop out and clubs fail and so on. So an exercise every year, if not twice a year, three times a year, is looking at the why. So for those of you who haven't seen Simon Sinek, please um, look at his TED Talk presentation, uh, take a look at his book and talk about it. Because what he shows here is most companies and many organizations otherwise start at the outside. They start at the what. And the what is what a company does. Do we make something? Do we change something? They start there. And then they go to the how. Here's how we do it. We have some unique selling proposition and so on. And then they get to the why. But they're missing out. His book, Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspire Everyone to Take Action, points <laughs> there. He gives an example in his book and the TED Talk about <coughs> Apple. And Apple is apparently doing this very well. They're starting with the why. They're saying that they're doing innovative products and that. But I won't get into that. That's something the TED Talk can show you. So can we apply this to Toastmasters? In the example, that's what I'm trying to show you, that we certainly can apply it to Toastmasters. So we. If you're meeting somebody and you're wanting to tell them about Toastmasters and they ask, as they often do, what is Toastmasters? What do you tell them? Does anybody have an example? Yeah. It's a safe place where I practice speaking and listening. Okay. Take another example. Uh, it's a place where you can speak in front of the audience and you can get feedback how you're performing. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there are many opportunities to speak. There are mm -hmm. almost no opportunities where you get more or less honest feedback how mm -hmm. you perform. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you think? <clears throat> we are on the same boat and we are here to help each other to grow. Okay. I think that Toastmasters is the only, almost the only organization in which you can practice some skills like high performance leadership. Mm -hmm. Setting up a vision, a mission, a value for a project, I think uh, it's extraordinary. Okay. Not a lot of organizations offer you the opportunity to do that. So, I'll come back. So these examples here that you're giving me, I, I detect much more of this. Mm -hmm. What about that? What if you started off with the why that some of you told me a minute ago? I joined Toastmasters because I wanted to be a better speaker. 
and I'm staying in it because of this and this and this that I discovered. And then ask them what's their why. Why did you show up today? Or what made you interested in it? Why are you interested? And try to connect on that basis. Connect with the why. Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do. They buy why <coughs> you do it. Why you do it. So the kind of why that you have, of why you join Toastmasters, will probably connect with somebody else's why. And if not, ask them. And the other way to get them to connect, because your why and their why might not be the same, but you heard five, six, seven other stories here of other people's why. So if you collect those stories of the why, you'll also be able to say, oh, and my friend Mary said she joined because of da, da, da. And that might be the thing that connects with them. The reason that I asked you to share your examples with somebody else here today and with the room generally is because when you start to say it out loud, it anchors it within yourself. But it also gives the other people here a story that they can take with them. It's sharing that story that makes an impact on others. So the second point that I'd like to put across in this short time I have left with you is related to the motivation. Once you have enticed people to show up <coughs> at your club, how do you keep them? In research done at Harvard by a lady called Teresa um, Amabile, she showed that nothing is more motivating than progress. And this was echoed in another author, Dan Airely, in his book, Predictably Irrational. Irrational. He explained that when we feel no progress, when we feel our work is futile, then motivation dies. So this gave the connection in my head. What a fantastic job we are usually doing in Toastmasters about talking about progress. And I had the perfect example at my Toastmaster meeting on Monday evening, where the evaluator talked to the speaker after the meeting and said, wow, I really see how you've progressed since you've done your first speech. Bingo. The guy stood up and was so, so much more proud of what he'd done because of the progress that he'd made. So I really hope you're using that in your evaluations, also talking about the progress that the person has made. I think in Toastmasters we're also using this because we're giving, <coughs> we're giving ribbons for achieving things, we're giving name badges for achieving things. That's also showing progress. But I think it's the comment between members of our clubs of somebody noticing the progress you've made that seals the deal. So I had an example of another friend when I asked her what her story is, why she stayed in Toastmasters. And she said she joined originally because her boss told her about Toastmasters. And the boss said, I want you to do some training for our company. So could you please go to Toastmasters so you'll get used to it? She said she stayed in Toastmaster because the boss continuously gave her feedback about her progress and suggested to her that she reach her DTM so she could reach the next level in the company as well. How the two connected, her progress, and how she could succeed. Where, which country was it? Or which that was America, that one. No. You don't think it applies here? <laughs> uh, definitely not in Sweden. The like companies couldn't care about the Toastmasters. I can give you a counter example okay. of myself. <laughs> because of all the training I've done in Toastmasters, which isn't really on my CV, I work for an IT consulting company, I'm a project manager, um, and Toastmasters is one line on my CV. That will be changed. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, a company said, well, we need a trainer. We need, the position is Global Training Manager. Mm -hmm. And they said, when you come to the interview, I don't want to just, um, you know, interview you about what you've done. I want you to get a, give an example of the training. 
So I did. I did an interactive training. They said, wow. You know, you were heads and tails above anybody else. And I got that position, and I'm still in it as global training manager because of my Toastmaster skills. They said all the other people that showed up <coughs> showed up with PowerPoints mm -hmm. and, you know, other sorts of training. So I definitely credit it to the experience I had in Toastmasters but not, in Sweden. Yeah, but not the details that you have at the TM. The DTM, per se, isn't it. It's the experience that I gained. Yeah. And so how you are I saying that they did not skills. train how to use PowerPoint in Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I'm not using it. <laughs> okay, progress. That was point two. So I'd like to go over to point three. And that is why you decided to be a leader. Because... Hopefully you made a conscious decision about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are probably a leader in many things you're doing in your life. How many in the room have children, perhaps? Sorry? Children? How many have children? A few of you? Did you ever consider that you're actually a leader for your children? They're looking up to you? I'm sorry? Sometimes. <laughs> Unless they're teenagers. They're not followers, though. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to tell them. You'd be surprised. <laughs> and other of us might be a leader of a sports team or other things if we have time outside Toastmasters for that. So we're building up our leadership skills in different ways. And of course, Toastmasters is one of them. So for the one minute that we have, do another internal reflection. And that is, why did you decide to become a leader in Toastmasters? And if I, if I took down every reason that was in this room, there'd probably be at least 20 different reasons, and that's fantastic. So what I've asked you to do now is get another why. <coughs> and who can you share this with? You know what we have coming up right now? We have... People who are, the people we have to find to become our next area directors and division directors. Have you talked to them about your why and their why? This is the way to get new area directors on board. And over the weekend, I hope <coughs> that you'll take notes from the other 20 people's opinions here, 20 people's other whys, so you have 20 arguments to take home. But of course, it has to come an internal why. But I have ever so many examples where somebody asked somebody, couldn't you step up and be a leader? And they said, could I do this? And then they did it. So I have two personal examples myself. When we started the first Toastmaster Club uh, on the west coast of Sweden, we were also asked if we could lead the district conference and it was an early district at the time. And we said, yeah, so we were looking around, well, who could be the leader? And we said, oh, he could be the leader, he could be the leader, oh, they could. And then somebody said to me, oh, I've seen you do this and this and this, could you be the project manager of the district conference? And to me at that time was, me? And I could, and I did it, and it, and it formed the basis of everything else that I did in Toastmasters after that. It was fantastic. <coughs> Then, a few years later, I think I was probably area governor here at the time, and somebody said, I have a vision. You, because you do this and this and this, you could be district governor. And this was so far from my thinking at the time, but it planted the seed. So please don't be afraid to share your why with the others around you and see the potential in them. Because I'm totally convinced that all of you in this room, and a number of others that didn't come, could do it. Could be a division director if you're only an area director now, and you could be anything at the district level, if your why becomes clear to you. So this is where I'm going back to the golden circle that I mentioned near the start. And that is getting the why clear to yourself. It could come in this internal reflection that you do at various points in time. 
But the challenge that I'd like to give you now for the rest of our time here over the weekend is go out and talk to others and ask them their why. Because this is the power that we have within us to rally others to be the leaders. Start with your why. <laughs>